together. Okay, so uh, I'll just do a little brief intro to for for uh, Yana um, with Frog Geeks. So she's trying to be the Amazon of sustainable building and sustainable living. It's kind of a go-to platform, um, you know, for all those sorts of types of projects and endeavors and, you know, where you can connect with, with different local experts, right. And, and, uh, and local contractors. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think you were around when Stephen Fern presented from arc 2030, he's really trying to present like kind of a, Sort of a go-to resource platform, and 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 it, it, you know, any of the people involved today um, who see a fit with his platform, I would probably recommend connecting with him and getting links off his platform over to you. You know, he's he's got some specific areas that they're working on, and uh, you know, in essence, if they see someone already doing it, they're happy to collaborate and uh, and 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 push people your direction. I think, and then. In, areas that, that no one's working on that they're sort of doing some so scratch some some stuff from scratch with the uh, arc 2030 so uh yeah without further ado i'll let yana actually give the more accurate de description of what she's doing and uh her and her brother right your your partners with your brother right correct correct that's that's true yeah cool so uh yeah so take it away Thank you so much, uh, Matt, for doing this, uh, for having set up this, you know, immense event for, I don't know, you run it for three days, so it must have been really like, you know, organizing this, putting the people, contacting them, everything. So really respect for this and thank you so much for having the opportunity to be here, to meet uh, uh, you guys and also, yeah, to be able to exchange with you. So maybe I can start with a, a quick personal story, how, uh, you know, the idea of for weeks came together. So. Um, as you know, everybody else, um, I was living a very like comfortable life for many of, of us actually, um, centrally located working and marketing and communication um, here in Switzerland after I moved uh, from Slovakia and um, I, everything was work working perfectly well. Then I had uh, one experience with being kind of uh, facing the fact that we produce a lot of waste when I was just coming back from shopping and I realized there is a lot of plastic um, that is being basically being used on everything that is uh, sold in the supermarkets. And literally the, the thought that I had that time and uh, somehow in some or the other form, it's always uh, till today with me, it's it's one person having uh, or uh, causing one action or doing one action, which um, if many people replicate that, it has a massive cumulative impact. So this was uh, the, the thinking that I had then. Then I became a parent, I became a mother. And I got really interested into the topics of, you know, sustainability and the future, etc. Uh, read a little bit, joined some organizations and um, with the background in marketing and communication, I was looking to kind of um, find a way to get engaged. And uh, this is where the idea of Frog Geeks uh, was born. And by the time I started to also build out uh, or build up a network of people that are um, located in sustainable building, uh, working with water, work, working with waste or having new materials. And I found this super interesting and I was so excited about the fact that there are so many solutions out there which we can use and they can be combined and they are so efficient, you know, um, you can convert waste in everything. And uh, yeah, it was just so exciting. So I thought, okay, so maybe we create a place for them where they can be concentrated. They can also talk to each other. And in the process of developing the idea, I uh, also realized that it's maybe not so simple as it seems. Uh, many times it's a lot of education, a lot of uh, discovery on the way. And uh, this is why I also brought my two colleagues uh, today with me on a panel. So we're happy to have a discussion. You were more than invited to, uh, you know, join some or, or join with some questions or observations or comments, whatever you consider relevant. And uh, these are two people which uh, we very much value. So I can maybe introduce them straight ahead. And then I would maybe show you some two, three slides about Frog Geeks and we would go into the panel. If I may suggest, I'm not quite sure. Matt has fallen asleep or is, uh, or if he's with us, anyhow, he has the right to after two days, whatever would happen, man, Matt, uh, we got it. It's good, we're gonna manage. And um, yeah, so let me first introduce you still with us. That's great. That's great. Love to see you. Uh, <laughs> so let me introduce 
yeah sorry you unmute you're you're on mute Matt. sorry yeah sorry uh yeah doing a little multitasking making sure that we have a couple of features that aren't working quite right uh technically uh on the polls right now uh, we had it earlier but for some reason not now but uh yeah no i'm i'm listening in so uh but i'll try to let you take it away Great, great, great to see you, Anya, <clears throat> and always. So let me introduce to you uh, my colleagues from Frog Geeks, uh, valued members also of Frog Geeks. As I mentioned, I'm going to show you then like two, three slides of uh, what we do, what we actually do. So uh, first, I would introduce uh, Dr. Giulio Campo. Uh, Dr. Giulio Campo is, as mentioned, uh, the member of Frog Geeks. He's also an advisor of uh, Frog Geeks. He has a heavy background with over 20 years of experience in ecology, educating, running projects connected to ecology, ocean uh, protection, uh, but also connected to economical output of organizations and their impact on the environment, but also communities, so advising and helping also municipalities. So let me welcome uh, with this uh, Dr. Giulio Campo. Thank you very much, Giulio, for taking the time and joining us from Brazil. Nice to have you here. And uh, the other person uh, which um, I had the pleasure to invite and he also took the time to be here with us is uh, Diego Romero. So Diego is also a valued member of, of Frog Geeks. Uh, he has, he's also on the advisory board of uh, our organization. Besides this, he has he's a chief uh, scientist in the Global Impact Alliance, an organization that is helping worldwide uh, companies, but also municipalities as well to discover their path to sustainability based on holistic system interactions and ecology. And uh, Diego has a background in uh, research, sustainability, ecology, biotechnology, and also botany. So it's, you know, these type of um, knowledge and experience that we try to inject and uh, embed and incorporate in everything that we do talk. And this is also the topic of our panel uh, today. Now, before I go into that, also to show you a little bit um, on what we actually do, I would just kind of run through two, three slides. Hopefully the sharing works well. And um, yeah, so you get an impression of uh, what it is that you can find or see on Frog X. I mean, um, Matt was already doing some, some propagation, sorry. Okay. Now this is a little a weird view. Hopefully, uh, can you see it? Can you see the uh, the screen? Just give me a yeah, Amaren. Thank you so much. So basically, this is what you can expect uh, from uh, Frog Geeks when you join us or when you come to the website. Definitely, we look uh, at uh, sustainability as a key element of any product solution service that is uh, being uh, shared, uh, consulting or service that is being uploaded over there. We work heavily with different organizations all around the globe, uh, looking at building infrastructure, but also the connected systems. So I mentioned we have, uh, sorry, water, energy, uh, materials, uh, but there are also the soft factors that we consider in the building, but also general in the well-being uh, of uh, uh, people and how we want to contribute to the well-being of, of people. So a lot of uh, the elements that uh, we kind of look at is biomimicry or biophilia. This is what we always try to incorporate either if it's building projects or it's concepts. So it's always connected to nature. That's uh, our that's our motto. That's our philosophy. We want to be connected to nature. We see, uh, we see us as a part of nature. So this is what we are also kind of putting forward. Uh, this is a little bit on the design principles uh, that we uh, kind of <clears throat> promote and uh, support. These are the types of materials or also elements that you find on our website. So very much, uh, sometimes very progressive, sometimes very traditional. We leave it up to the user, to the client, you know, to find what, what is interesting for them. But basically, this is a little bit like a, like a tasting of uh, what you can expect, what you can find there. Um, this was a slide from uh, one of the recent presentations that we had uh, on the European Tech Chamber on sustainable building. One of the principles in terms of building that we promote, which is, um, you know, designing for modularity, disassembly, and uh, kind of having some layers or modules that you can reuse, uh, that you can disassemble, that you can recycle in different uh, ways uh, to uh, prolong their usage uh, in, 
in yeah in in our in our in the way we we work and we function with things. Now, uh, last uh, or one of the last slides uh, which I included uh, in the in the slide deck is um, regarding resilience. So it was several times mentioned already. Emiliano had a very uh, interesting, very good connection to, you know, where what is the situation with, uh, you know, global warming, uh, the risks that we face in terms of food production, how we uh, can rely or should have also backup systems that uh, are kind of, you know, like a security for. Um, facing this uh, this crisis that we are in and heading more and more towards to without being kind of negative, just being you know realistic with the numbers that we have all in hand and all um, you know at our use or for our use, we look certainly at resilience as a key element also of the buildings. So looking at you know the different aspects, whether it's climate, it's thermal comfort, we look for uh, low energy usage or for uh, utilities or elements in the building and um, yeah, if possible, definitely uh, we support um, the nature connected uh, solutions that are available because, uh, yeah, um, you can have a discussion about uh, what is more reliable if it's a machine or if it's a natural technology. But, you know, both of them have, have their risk. And um, what we see is, you know, some of the best technologies are actually nature based, if not like all. But uh, yeah, let's let's come to that at the at the later point of the presentation. And um, the last one would be a, a little bit about the challenges that we face or see, which is design, education, usage, maintenance, the behavior. Uh, uh, Gutan uh, had a, also a great presentation about the behavior of people, uh, norms and standards that are many times in the way, and the regulation support. That that is a big thing. So this would be a little bit about us. Now with this, um, if there would be any questions, I would like open or, or take some questions like right now, if you would uh, like to have any. Meanwhile, me uh, let me also uh, promote that we always look for new partners, uh, technology, companies, um, everybody. We see we see it as a like a collaboration, a team sport. Uh, we are on one uh, one uh, team, on one boat, and uh, yeah, if you would like to join us just let us know and let's figure out a way how to you know get you on board it as soon as possible we have many partners alex i see your hand sorry i just realized it now <laughs> alex did you want to go ahead i i have a question yes. or two but you got your hand raised first yeah. so i'll i'll yeah. defer to you yeah. thanks um yeah i this might sound a little bit nitpicky to some people but since you're in the architectural space and since you mm -hmm. um i i just wanted to share that you use the term sustainability and regenerations uh regeneration together while mm -hmm. there is an important distinction um and i think it's also important to to make this distinction clear uh to your audience so mm -hmm. the one of the First, one of the, I think, thought leaders in this area is Bill Reed. And mm -hmm. I just posted an article in which he just beautifully explains uh, the difference between sustainability and regeneration. Mm -hmm. So something I would advise for you to, to incorporate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alex. We're always open for feedback, for ideas. And this is actually what we see in every place. I mean, we talk about sustainability because that's the segment where, where we come from. But when you look at our site, you will see very, very quickly, it's not about buildings only. There are business concepts, strategies, consulting businesses, post-growth, degrowth, uh, companies and advising companies on board as well, circular economy platforms as well. So, and some others, digital uh, regeneration finance platforms and partnerships that we are also starting. So I hear you. And what, I, what I'm saying is collaboration and open dialogue. If there are points, yes. I'm, I'm sure some of the colleagues, Diego or, or Julio, may comment on, on your point. I hear it and what we discussed. I mean, I don't know, uh, gentlemen, if you would like to comment on right now, Diego or Julio, on the regeneration versus sustainability, because this is a topic we have all the time. So maybe you can exchange straight ahead if, if you would like to. Would you like to comment on? Or? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Diego, you want to go? 
Ne oluyor Jüli? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know that the article uh, and that uh, illustration that comes on that on, on that. And uh, from the uh, when we we look at that from the ecological uh, perspective, from the ecological systems perspective. Uh, Yes, we see that there's a lot of uh, a huge misconception on where it comes to regeneration and sustainability. But uh, is the on the uh, how was it on the opposite way? Uh, because we see uh, regeneration is what man keeps a system operating. It's part of the system processes. Uh, when uh, forest lose uh, has some impacts, uh, its its for resilience is affected. Is regeneration capability that will make it go back to its previous uh, equilibrium, it takes to its previous uh, pre previous state. So, uh, regenerative. The uh, system regenerative is uh, a, a process, a, a component of the the system that leads uh, to sustainability, that allows the systems to be sustainable. So uh, I, I have a, a bit of issue when I see that the kind of uh, <clears throat> phrase from sustainability to regenerative. Uh, going beyond sustainability on the sense because that applies to uh, economics sustainability not to sustainability uh, in sense as uh, as is if, if we're talking about uh, the SDGs the the preparation sustainability or whatever yes we need to move from sustainability from that, that's not real sustainability that's weak sustainability to regenerative to achieve a strong sustainability afterwards. But uh, what concerns me is that is that, uh, that idea is being uh, shared or as if regenerative was uh, something above uh, sustainability, but uh, uh, when it isn't. On all natural systems, you need regenerative, regenerative process to have a sustainable system is not the other words you don't have sustainable systems and then you have a uh, regenerative so uh i think that is a distinction that's not as important one that it's not being made and we'll, since we already have lost the meaning of sustainability today everything is sustainable uh, is it, it, a buzzword for everything we are losing also for regenerative and that's that's a huge concern but, yeah, I, so I, I would i would like to jump on this because as i raised the point about this sustainability to regeneration point everything has been adopted by uh profit by profit companies yeah. in terms of marketing just to appeal you know uh, yeah. it's we we even use the term greenwashing for mm -hmm. uh, regeneration, while well, actually green was like one of the first trends that started developing. So you have like um, um, green, and then you get the sustainable team movement, and now you go to um, uh, it's not regeneration, but an another reword which is in the paper from Bill. <clears throat> but all of these terms will just get um, greenwashed, let's say. And as a solution to this, you might be interested to look at initiatives like um, uh, non-profit ventures, which is basically you turn things around. Like what's the thing that cannot be adopted by mainstream business? What cannot be, what's something that mainstream business cannot adopt, which is not for profit. They can't say that they're not for profit because it's directly in conflict with their reason for being. Another thing is, um uh yeah there's the same line I, I will post i will post two links for you to explore and you could have a discussion about this 
internally and see how you can apply this to your idea of, for instance, non-extractive construction. That will be something that would uh, be very unique for the, the thing you want to do and will not be able to be adopted. It is not possible to adopt by for-profit companies. So, is my point so I'm going to... I, I think so. I'm going to uh, maybe bring up a few things. Like when we have words that are be, begin to be popular or desirable for the public, but there's not an official definition, legal definition, and anyone can use the word or legal standard, then I think it gets corrupted and the word gets overused. You know, like you said, with sustainable uh, natural is, is one, I think, that, that's, you know, been overused for years because there's not much of a standard there. There's a, there's a little bit of a standard, but it's very minimal, you know, at least here in the U.S. Um, organic is one that actually, you know, has some restrictions on it. And so there was a debate uh, recently on LinkedIn whether uh, I think the USDA, you know, in the United States should should start regulating the use of regenerative. And, you know, there's a lot of people that said, no, they, they should stay out of it. You know, the organics movement got corrupted. You have now big, you know, big farms in, that are organic, right? But at least there's actually some standard there where I look at like a word like, um, you know, green or, or, or uh, um, uh, natural and, and, you know, or, you know, that th th can just be used by anyone at any time almost. And there's really no meaning to it anymore just because it gets so overused. So I actually do sort of favor that there's actually a, a standard that companies must meet to be able to use a certain word, even if that standard isn't perfect, you know, because, you know, governments get involved and they don't necessarily make the standard exactly like it should be. Um, Maybe it's not as flexible as it should be, but at least it's some bar that you have to go over versus anyone could just use it at whim. Um, no, I, I see your hand up there, Alex. So what do you yeah. think there? The, the, the problem with that is that when you have these regulations, all these regulations often provide enormous costs for, for starting organizations to get these regulations. And this, it, then you create a barrier to to enter the market. True. This is the problem with organic. I, I've been uh, volunteering a lot at olive farmers in Spain here. The small ones can't get the organic label. Well, they're actually their operations are organic. And as a result, they, they miss out on a lot of uh, um, revenue, but they actually would be able to put their yeah, products organically in the market. So, that's why I go back to these terms like non-extractive or, yeah, name something else. So, it's something that cannot be adopted by for-profit companies or that it is less likely to be adopted by for-profit organizations. Well, okay, but like, let's look at a term like regenerative. Um, how can that term be used? I mean, you can't restrict it to just non-profit companies. So how do you like, you know, terms that are being used by both for-profit and non-profit companies, how do you, do you have any sort of regulation on those terms? Do you have any sort of standard? Um, I, I, I think your point is very valid that if you make the regulatory compliance too high, it favors the big companies because they have more economies of scale to deal with that regulatory cost where and it, it makes it harder for the small companies. So I, there's definitely an issue there, but I think it's also important for the consumers to be able to make an easy decision, right? So they, you know, they can't research every product from scratch. They want something simple. They can look at it, either a standard or a rating scale, you know, and, and so, so how do you balance those two, do you think? And, and tying it sort of into our theme, you know, where do you think that will come out? You know, is it going to favor the big guys or is it going to favor no one <laughs> because the term just gets misused or do you do something, you know, how, how, how can we best address that 
and how does it affect different companies and, and different investments potentially? Mm -hmm. uh, that was an amazing bridge. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, if I may, if I may bridge that because uh, not that we hijack our panel, you know, that not that you hijack our panel and the discussion that we had. So uh, exactly the point is very important that you mentioned um, investors and the businesses, how are they protected against what is coming, against the change of uh, circumstances, the material costs which are coming, the depletion of natural sources, which will anyhow impact them in, in their supply chain and the regulation, of course. So the, the less they are protected, the more they will be affected. And this is also the tagline for our panel today. And this is why we decided to um, um, suggest the topic of ecosystem services that are relevant and their impact on the business. So this is where I again uh, looked at uh, look at uh, Julio and uh, look at Diego to share um, their perspective uh, on why are ecosystem services uh, relevant as an element to consider in their business planning. If you like to maybe to share with us. Julio, you are unmuted. Yeah, oh, I, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go like this. Yes, it's okay. okay. Uh, no, sorry, just a wrap up of what uh, on my sure, please, and, mm -hmm. and to maybe to, to answer to, to Matt. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we need to be, to be uh, uh, specific about what we're talking about. So, uh, that's uh, I see a lot on LinkedIn about regenerative and sustainability, but uh, okay, I see regenerative realms beyond sustainability, but. Which sustainability are we talking about? Yeah, that's not uh, environmental sustainability. That's uh, business sustainability. In the sense of okay, uh, to achieve uh, uh, strong sustainability, the business needs to go beyond what they have today, which is uh, is not sustainability uh, really, and starts to regenerate. Regenerate what? What we degraded, what we destroyed. So uh, we need to, to put a little more, more definitions on that. So it's regenerative business, uh, regenerative goes beyond business sustainability, not beyond sustainability. Uh, so something like, like that. Um, Diego, do you want to go on, on system ecosystems first? Yes, I could. Yeah, I think uh, like the the eco services or uh, the ecosystem functional. Uh, it's not something that uh, just like Matt uh, mentioned. It's not uh, just things that non profits can do. It's uh, something that uh, for profits can do too. Because like when we think about our planet or about sustainability, we need to to have in mind uh, that. Like the planet, it's a, a great, uh, huge system, and we rely on that system. So all that we put efforts to keep this system running, uh, it's uh, for us continue to to live here. So this uh, apply for nonprofits or for profits too. So uh, about eco services, uh, we can have examples like uh, beverage industries that use a lot of water. So for this kind of companies, it's very helpful for them to preserve areas that produce areas. So uh, 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 basins that have uh, springs and uh, small creeks and that produce a lot of water. So in, in that way, uh, like the preservation uh, and things that most of the times no profits take care uh, for profit uh, uh, could take care of these parts too because these provide a service for a, a company. So the problem right now it's just that companies don't see what's happened in the in the system. So this is why uh, most of the times when we talk about sustainability, we talk about systemic thinking and holistic view. But this is the the lag point for most of the companies. They don't understand what the systems provide, how the system function, uh, what are the flows of the system. And because that they cannot achieve a real sustainability because they don't understand what are the systems that they are living in. So 
all the times when we talk about eco services, all our society rely on on eco services a hundred percent. So even the talk that uh, uh, the the WEF uh, talk about and other institutions that our economy rely in fifty or a little more fifty percent of the the biodiversity. It's wrong. Like. 100% of our economy rely on, on biodiversity because the biodiversity is the basis for the ecosystem. And uh, this is the basis, uh, This like all the life give the basis for the economy. So we need to really start to change the idea and start to understand uh, the systems that we live to understand uh, what we need to keep functioning in the ecosystem. So this is the, the eco services that provide a lot of things for us. So water, air, and soil, and even the biodiversity with all the genetics and all these uh, keep the, the resilience to keep us alive. So when, when looking at this, uh, I mean, Julio, <clears throat> um, when looking at this uh, perspective and the impact of, uh, or, you know, the, the yeah, the, the impact and the, um, for uh, the feedback for uh, investors and for businesses that are operating in this ecosystem. It's quite apparent that they try to kind of uh, look for ways for strategies to protect their wealth, to protect their business models, to operate as long as possible on existing known models. Kind of, uh, yeah, it's complicated. It's It, it uh, requires a lot of resources, a lot of reorganization to, to change the concept. This is understood and great. Now, we see also a lot of offsetting uh, happening. Uh, what do you think? I mean, we see uh, carbon offsets happening right now in a certain form. Uh, is there any change that you, uh, of course, the same question to Julio. We appreciate your perspective. Do you see um, what, what is the future of carbon offsetting for you? Will it continue this way? Or what do you what do you consider may may you know be the format of carbon offsetting in the future? Yeah. Uh... Good, great. Uh, I will add uh, uh, another uh, point to your question because we, we businesses start to talk about biodiversity of setting, and that's uh, semi confirmed. But uh, uh, I see it uh, when it comes to setting on two, two possible scenarios. Either we keep the business as usual, as it is today try to, to push the carbon price uh, up to make bring more investments on carbon markets and, and offsetting. Or we go to a more uh, real approach on sustainability, uh, let's say, and we start to move it from offsetting uh, uh, and it's a net zero concept to what we really need, which is uh, absolute zero. We need to, of course, absolute is not, uh, not possible, but uh, which is to have an actual reduction at the source of the emissions, not only the removal of the carbon. Because uh, what you have today is that you, you can uh, continue to emit, and as long as you are suppressing carbon, as much as we are emitting, it's, you're okay. So, but uh, there's lots of problems here. One of the most important is that we don't emit only carbon, we emit a lot of other uh, gases and materials that are causes a very uh, problem, a uh, local problem of um, population health, uh, mostly. Mm -hmm. so, Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, for the future, I see that maybe we need to go, if we want to do a real change, we need to go to the more actual, uh, and here you go, the regenerative uh, again into the discussion to recover the environmental that we, that we lost, to recover all the ecosystems, all the surfaces, or the biodiversity. So that can boost the capability of the, the systems to up to uh, sequester carbon, but also we must 
go to uh, actual reduction of the sources. Without that, uh, there is no no real uh, change. Thank you. you. Uh, also, I'm looking at the time, so we need to keep it uh, short. Thank you so much. Julio, Diego, would you like to add something? No, I think uh, Jerry covered uh, the idea. Mm -hmm. um, we hear also in these times a lot about new materials, new commodities. Um, people are very interested in, I don't know, investing into bamboo, into cassava, into algae. Um, what is your perspective on um, yeah, <laughs> trying uh, these new commodities in maybe different ecosystems, different uh, landscapes, uh, different application? And do you see any risks connected to that for the company, for the investor in terms of stability of their investment? What would you give them on the way? I'm thinking about that. Uh, I think the, the, the key point and the danger point is uh, run an, another commodity because commodity uh, relies in monoculture and monoculture can cause a lot of problems. And we are talking sometimes to uh, about these new commodities uh, that are uh, invasive species or exotic species to a lot of countries, and it is a, a problem too. So, I think we have a, a good opportunity to to work with these different species, but uh, we mainly focus in native species to use uh, the biodiversity and the opportunity that each country can uh, give to, to the society. Uh, so in that way, it's, we can achieve uh, a better status in each country using what the, the biodiversity in each place can, can give to us. So a lot of places have uh, bamboo uh, that can uh, yeah, achieve very good uh, results in engineering and, and all, but yeah, like if we start to uh, uh, just uh, create monocultures in, in other countries and start to to create problems with invasive uh, species in other countries, like this is uh, will not be good. We will just uh, replace the problem from one species to another. Thank you. Julia, would you like to uh, add to, to Diego's perspective? Yes, the, 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 just to, to reinforce what Diego said, uh, we, we see a lot of, of hype on biomaterials today. Um, as I said, bamboo, hemp, and whatever. But uh, uh, yes, they, they can be used to... to, to to re replace uh, some non-renewable materials. But uh, we seem to be forgetting that uh, uh, two things. One, th there's no silver bullet, so there is no magic solution for what we need. And so, uh, as Diego said, what works at one uh, country not necessarily works on another. Um, the case of bamboo, for instance, we don't have uh, adequate species here in Brazil for uh, architectural use, so we need to look for other kinds of, of vegetation, of plants. And also, uh, uh, another big problem is that uh, we're not looking at the problems that those solutions can bring when we scale them up to a market scale. To a massive use, so that uh, uh, very uh, important concern, because uh, as as you said, there is to uh, supply the, the the market demand. We need monocultures and large ones, and we already have those problems with uh, monocultures for for timber, for paper, for for uh, sugar, uh, sugar cane, for, for biofuels. And now we will add another monoculture for uh, whatever that we know looking. So we need to pay attention to the problems that the can cause. 
No, Julio, that was a perfect bridge. That was over like uh, in volleyball, they call it a smash. You know, you 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 throw up the ball. And the question is, so what, what would be your uh, also advice, maybe also to wrap it up? I don't know, Matt, how, time, how much time we have still left. You're on mute, Matt, if, if you would like to. We have Sorry, still I'm some. trying to get a speaker lined up who was a little late responding. Uh, no problem. Let's see. So I think we had a break scheduled after, and we can kind of shorten that a little bit. Um, let's see. So we need to start. Yeah, we should be starting uh, actually David Jones soon, I think. So, yeah, why don't we uh, wrap it up here? And then if you mm -hmm. guys can just intro David. Uh, he's uh, talking about environmental services and kind of the intro to the carbon markets. Um, mm -hmm. That will uh, will be good. He's with uh, CO2 uh, Echo. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try to get this other uh, speaker uh, lined up here and appreciate uh, everything from perfect. you guys there. Perfect, perfect. So it's a perfect bridge actually towards that. So what is uh, also to uh, conclude uh, this uh, exchange? What is your recommendation for um, entrepreneurs? I mean, we have a very diverse audience uh, here for entrepreneurs that, that are maybe having progressive solutions, new solutions, new materials, etc. But also um, investors potentially interested in new projects, uh, new ideas. What is like maybe also the um, kind of joint principle that you would recommend them to be resilient? Um, uh, in the future for regulation that is uh, becoming more tighter. Of course, we see there is a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of uh, lack of educational, uh, lack, of, lack of, you know, seeing um, the, the connections between the elements. So what would you recommend them to start with and, um, you know, to equip themselves best possibly uh, for, for the coming time? Okay. Uh, uh, I will wrap that up on, on a single phrase that is uh, don't believe the hype. I like it very much. So if we, especially for the investors, uh, if you see something that there's too much uh, interest on, too much hype on that, uh, like uh, one single example is the biodegradable strike that you have today. Uh, take it easy. Try to understand better uh, what the product, what the idea is about, what the real benefit it will bring. And it, that goes also for entrepreneurs. Uh, try to actually, under, actually understand the problem that you're trying to solve because uh, and the solution that you're bringing because uh, we're seeing lots of uh, solutions that either don't solve uh, a thing or will actually just replace the problems so uh, because the the people bring they they are well intentioned they they, they want to do, to do good but they lack the proper devising on what they are doing later on the problem that they try to solve and the solution that they are and how they're trying to solve that so uh it's just some some red flags that i will say that must be aware of thank you so much julia for being here with us and sharing diego yeah, I'm, I think for me, uh, right now, I think the most clever, uh, I try to to learn about system thinking because, yeah, I, I think right now with uh, like to, to handle with nature, without system thinking, it's something almost impossible to really uh, start to understand nature. So, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Diego, also for sharing your perspective. I mean, if anybody would be interested, we are happy to, you know, uh, drop the contact details. Or please, Julia. I see also no, Alex. That's for what you always uh, uh, So, uh, and always keep in mind for for 
o whole, whole universe of sustainable products or solutions or want to develop that uh, we don't have and it is impossible to have a magic solution that will solve a plethora of, of, of problems so what we have and what you need is a small lo local solutions for uh, and approaches for the problems so uh, it's that phase of if something looks too good something looks uh, to be true that that then probably it is so it's uh, just go with caution Thank you so much for sharing. With that, with uh, Alex, uh, we come to your question. Would you like to uh, take, bring it up now, please? Or point or yeah. observation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Um, building forward on, on Julio's uh, uh, remark that there's no silver bullet and lots of experimentation needs to be done. I have an idea how pro geeks could harvest um, a lot of knowledge from from the field because there are like there's a boom going on in regenerative communities around the world and these communities do a lot of they do basically experimentation in building a sustainable way so it might be a good idea for frog geeks to connect with all these regenerative communities and harvest from there how do you build what has worked for you what hasn't worked and 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 compile this all together and based on that you can also extract that knowledge i will put some uh, links to eco village uh, and and regenerative community pages so you can have a look for alex thank so you so much this was supposed to be another meeting thank you so much uh, i think i opened uh, already my <laughs> link that was included over there so uh great points um, yeah, for me also a very interesting exchange, definitely an interesting group. Thank you so much, uh, Matt, again. Uh, what I would highlight just um, before closing our slot here is um, I believe it's also like the mission that is uh, connecting us. I mean, the event today is uh, called Invest in Earth, not Invest in Money or Let's Earn More Money. You know, so I believe it's also a mission that we have, a vision that we have of the future that is connecting us, that is a type of a culture that we are developing, creating. We heard about education for children today. We heard about, you know, values, who wants to say what. And at some point, we all meet because we know it's an ecosystem. We're all connected. So this is where I would also like to close, uh, which is collaboration. Uh, being open, staying connected. Uh, I met, uh, that was the first sentence when uh, when we got in touch and it was, let's put this, let, let's bring these people together. Let's bring uh, us together because then it's not going to be 500 people in Africa and 1,000 people in Dortmund. It's going to be a large community of people and we will see how many we are. And we heard it also about the public, uh, you know, the surveys and everything where you see there are a lot more people interested. Just uh, out of, uh, you know, a little story, I'm organizing here an event in our local community where we are based, and we put up a little art uh, recycling event together for the community just to bring up the topic uh, in workshop style with fun and, you know, for families up. However, when uh, companies uh, learned about uh, the event, they started to support us for free. People started to offer us promotion for free because they just heard it and they said, like, Okay, good. Well, do you do it on like a business? No. Okay, let's go. So it's a very interesting approach uh, to see and the reaction that many more people are there to support us and are interested in this topic. So this is my closing word to you. Collaboration. Let's stay connected. Let's stay together. And, uh, you know, let's see what, what great stuff we can do. Thank you so much for, for the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, thank you, Yana, for participating. And I don't know if you mentioned, you told me, I think you have, what, 180 partners currently on five or six continents. Um, probably and, it's more. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, well, probably not more than six continents, right? Not more than six. Uh, I'm not quite yeah, sure. If it's but but maybe more apologize. than 180. So that's pretty cool. And that's just on the contractor side, right? Like, uh, you know, Correct. businesses that are that are waiting so then they all have customers so you're starting to get a nice synergy there you know uh Steph Stephen Fern uh presented earlier you know he's got a lot of followers on LinkedIn a lot of his posts go quite viral there 
um, lots of comments and, and, and they're launching a new website tomorrow. That's ARC uh, 2030. So I think there's collaborative efforts there potentially. And we're going to obviously put up, you know, we'll kind of synthesize the event. It might take us a little bit to edit through some stuff, but we'll provide you guys with material. We'll provide you with stuff to provide your, your networks. Um, we'll have stuff on our sites. We'll try to make some intros where, where we think things are logical and, and help with a collaborative effort. Um, Alex, you still have your hand up. Did you have a, a final thought before we roll into uh, to David and Donato? No, uh, nope. nope. Okay. All right, cool. So we're going to roll into those guys. Um, we will probably have, have, you know, to be fair to them, give them most of the networking time at the end here. Um, you know, so they have a, we have a hard stop at, at 1500, I think in, 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 uh, uh, let me see. It's, uh, it's, it's basically a hard stop in about a half hour, um, going into, uh, the metaverse event for menthol protocol. But uh, we can use most of that time, you know, the next half hour for these two guys and, and Q&A. And, Q &A. and uh, thanks, everyone, for participating so far.